What is going on everybody? Welcome back to a brand new video. Today we are going to be going over web scraping, particularly in Python, utilizing requests, and beautiful soup. Sorry for the mess in my house. The shoes aren't usually out in the open, but it's storming right now, so don't want to, you know, track mud throughout the house. Web scraping is great. You can pull data from pretty much any page, as long as it doesn't go against the website's terms of service. And you always want to be mindful of a website's terms of service, because if you try to web scrape something that goes against it you could either be banned from the website like i was from yelp or you can get in some serious trouble i responded to an upwork listing to web scrape a website upon visiting the website however i realized that it was a government website and in their terms of service it said that it was against automation and web scraping so if i didn't read that i probably wouldn't be making this youtube video or at least outside of a jail cell so let's get right into one of the most dangerous forms of programming not really it's pretty tame as long as you just be mindful of what you are doing and where you are doing it so today we're going to be web scraping this website right here by travel.us news and this is the top 25 is it 25 top 25 places to visit in california being a californian i wanted to choose a data set that was kind of fun to work with and resonated with me now what are we going to pull from this website basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a csv file csv files are just my favorite format but you can do json you could do really whatever kind of file you want to do but we're going to create a csv file holding the names of these places as well as the bios i'm not going to pull everything from the website you could pull images with web scraping but the only downside is that you are going to need additional python libraries to actually read those images now let's get into the libraries that we are going to need we are going to need import requests csv for creating a csv file and writing to it and from bs4 import beautiful soup i believe requests and csv are both in the default packages for python so if you download python these should already come with it beautiful soup however will require an install and you could just pull up the terminal and do pip install bs4 for beautiful soup 4 you should already know by now that we're gonna do a pip install i think we do a pip install in every single video but once you have that all squared away let's get into our prerequisites before we go into pulling data so the first thing that we're going to want to do is create a headers variable now headers basically tell the parser of your program how to parse the information on the website depending on what kind of website it is what version all that kind of information is stored in your headers for me i'm using google chrome if you're using a different web browser you might want to check if these headers apply to you but i'm pretty sure that the headers that i'm going to be including are not just for google chrome but also support mozilla firefox is that how you say it mozilla mozilla I don't know and microsoft edge and maybe opera gx if you're a gamer but what you're going to want to do is just do a variable i'm just going to do new headers and then we're going to do curly braces like this and single quotation marks as well we're going to put user slash agent in the first pair of single quotation marks and we're going to do a colon and another pair of single quotation marks inside of here we're going to put mozilla mozilla i still don't know slash 5.0 and then in parentheses we're going to put x 11 semicolon linux x 86 underscore 64 another semicolon rv colon 109.0 and then outside of the parentheses put gecko slash 2010101 i believe and then after that do firefox slash 117.0 throughout this video if you run into an error where you think that you are extracting something but it's not actually extracting or if you check the type of the variable you're extracting and it comes as none type make sure to check your headers because you're probably just not accessing the website correctly now that we have our headers let's declare some global variables that we're going to use to store the data that we get from the website we're going to have ds equal a list and l equals a dictionary if you don't know what a dictionary is it's basically for every index you don't just have one variable type you have multiple so i'm gonna make a main function you don't have to you can really just format this however you want but this is just how i do my code since these are global variables declared out of a function we have to declare them as global variables like this and we call them inside our main function so that they link in scope so first we're going to do our url equals and we're going to just copy this url 
straight from our browser. Next, we are going to do r equals requests.get our URL dot text. After that, we'll do our soup variable, soup equals beautiful soup, and then we'll put r and comma, and then in parentheses, you want to put HTML parser. There are other parsers out there, but since we are just using a standard HTML website, HTML parser will work perfectly. I forgot also to implement our headers. After URL, you want to do a comma, headers equals and then our headers variable which i set to new headers so after this point we have connected to the website and we are ready to pull data from it all the data in this website is going to be in the soup variable so if i do print soup dot prettify this is going to be the html for the entire website that it's printed out and as you can see here it says usnews.com so we know that this is the website that we are trying to access let's pull some actual data from the website now since i want to pull every single element from this website for our own data set i'm sure it's going to be list elements but we can check that by going to inspect and if you don't really know HTML, the inspect element is great for getting familiar with how HTML is formatted, the different classes, etc. If you see, we have dark blue, blue, and orange. Orange is going to be names of stuff. So like a class name, a CSS name. It's basically how the HTML relates to the CSS that is also in the website. The dark blue is gonna be element classes, I guess you could say. So div is a type of element. Style is a type of element, that's CSS. Nav is a type of element. And then light blue is just member variables of the element. So for this div, we have an ID of lightbox, blah, blah, blah. So as you hover over things in the inspect bar, it will start to highlight elements in the website. And that's how you know what relates to what. So it looks like this div right here encapsulates pretty much the entire website or at least the part that we want to gather which is the list of places so we're going to keep going in by clicking these arrows and making sure that the part we want to grab is still highlighted so as you can see here we have a ul and a ul is a collection of list items or a list and li is going to be each list element within that list as you can see here this relates to catalina islands box this relates to lake tahoe's box and so on if we go in this li we are trying to find catalina island what element relates to catalina island as you can see here in this div class we start to splice up this element this element relates to the image and this element relates to the text so we're going to keep going through the text and in here we can see the white text catalina island it's raw html text which is perfect for gathering we have an h3 class of this and we are going to extract the text now let me show you how to do that i actually got ahead of myself before even going this far let's iterate through every single one of the elements so we don't have to do this 25 times what we can do is we can do all list equals soup dot find all and you want to do the find underscore all in quotation marks we're going to put li and then we're going to put curly braces class colon and then the name of the class which is going to be for our li elements where did our li element go right here so generic list item container usually with list items especially if they're in the same list or ul they're going to have the same class which makes it really easy to find all of the same one or all the ones that relate to each other i guess we're gonna put this in here and now we have all 25 list items now what we can do is we can create a for loop and we can do for i in range zero all or lin all list this is our dictionary getting implemented we could say our title or our place we could actually let's do place to make it a little bit more relevant to what we're doing equals it equals this h3 class so we're gonna put all list element i dot find h3 curly braces class and then we're gonna put that guy in there what we just copied from here this right here we transferred over to our class so we have our place and then after every iteration of the for loop you want to clear l just to make sure that you're not concatenating any extra items and all the data for an iteration is only part of that iteration l equals an empty dictionary at the end i almost forgot at the end we need to put text and it's always a very good practice to use try and accept blocks html is not the most consistent formatting language sometimes people will put elements that look like the same exact thing in different classes so you want to have try and accept blocks in case your program does not properly access data so we'll put try this and then accept which means basically if it doesn't work if it returns an error 
we're just gonna print error if we run this you can see that it was good that we did this while we did get some of the items like catalina island mammoth legs we also got a bunch of errors which my first instinct is that these are stored not in an h3 class but in something different or if they are stored in an h3 class their actual class declaration this right here is different so let's look at right after catalina island and let's see where that text is stored lake tahoe right here is giving us trouble if we go into lake tahoe's blog and we keep going down you can see that lake tahoe's text right here this white text is not actually stored in this h3 class but it's in one further child. In HTML, a child is basically just a node that is within another node. So A is a child of this H3 class, and Lake Tahoe is stored instead in this A element, not the H3 element. In our accept block, we are going to do L place equals all list dot find, and we're gonna do A instead, and we'll put our class is this right here this anchor stuff and i don't want to presume that this is going to be great for every single case so let's do another try and accept block we'll just make it embedded in this try and accept block the first one this is probably not the best practice but this is what i do and then the final accept will say error now if we run this code it looks like all the names came back positive with no errors and we can move on to our next step so after that let's get the bios of each of these places and then we'll stop there because i don't want this video to get too long we can do a second episode where we get into more complex things like different websites in the same domain and google searches raw google searches because that's very useful in some cases so of course we're going to start with a try and accept blog so we can handle any errors that arise and we'll do l bio equals all list fine and now we need to find our other element the one that relates to the bio of these places so within tahoe it looks like it's within this div class and it's in this p block now p block is not actually an element that you have to reference you can just do the parent block of the p class if you do p dot text it's actually not gonna come back with the text that i'm showing right here instead we'll have to do this div class and then do dot text it will find this paragraph so let's copy this class because i know we're gonna need it we're gonna write div as our element name or i guess element type we're gonna do curly braces class colon and that stuff we just copied and let's end it with dot text you gotta do this dot text at the end to actually extract that white text from html and if we get an error with that we'll just print error so we shouldn't get any errors but we could you know you just you never know i already know that this is going to look really clustered in the terminal and it's going to be hard to find any errors if we have any so let's get on to putting this in a csv file and then from there we can see if we have any errors and go back and fix them if there are any after you have each l from each iteration before clearing it you want to append it to our list ds to save that data l is for every iteration of the web page and ds is the entire data set that you get do another try and accept block because i just love error handling now use our csv with open we're gonna put in quotation marks output dot csv um we're gonna put a w in quotes and this is for write you can do an r if you're trying to read a file but we're trying to write to a file this will write to a file that already exists and if one does not exist it will create the file and we're going to have our new line delimiter as just an empty string after the parentheses you want to put as file and colon next we're going to create a writer variable and this is going to write to the csv file so we'll put writer equals dot writer and it's going to write to the file we're going to write our first row of the csv file which is going to be the columns with csvs it's always good to have an index so we're going to start with an index variable and then just have our name of the place and our bio and that's going to be the whole file before our try block let's just create an index variable set it to one we'll do writer dot write row and then we'll do a little square bracket in the parentheses and we'll do index later have a good class We'll do place and then we'll do bio. So after we have our initial labeling, we can put the actual data that we extracted in. We'll do a for loop to iterate through our data set. I in range zero len uh, DS. And we'll put writer dot write row. And in the square bracket, we will do index first of all. Then we'll do L or no, sorry, we did place, huh? Place and l bio increment our index and for our accept block we will just do print csv error in case we get a csv error i almost forgot we're not actually doing l we're doing ds and since ds is a list of dictionary items we are going to do dsi 
place CSI bio. You could do multiple indexes if it is a dictionary item and you're looking at a specific index of the dictionary. So if we run this, what should happen? Well, if we run it, we're gonna get a bunch of stuff. This is our original list of places right here. But the real magic is if I go into my finder and if I navigate to where our Python file is, see here it is vid.py, we have a new file output.csv. If I open that guy up, it'll open up Excel. And here is our index, place, and bio. So we have all 25 places. We have all 25 bios with none of them saying everything so it looks like they all got extracted perfectly now obviously bio is not a great thing to extract because it's huge this is not a cool thing to put into a csv file i would recommend against it but if you're trying to crunch some numbers from a website then this is perfect uh dates work really well because you can sort them earliest to newest i've web scraped addresses and we should go over that in the next video because that has to do with raw google searches for example if i search something like this it will bring up the address right here i can show you guys how to extract this as well just from the raw google page but we'll get into that in the next video i feel like you guys have a lot to learn just from this video and a lot to practice it's really not that hard and if i can do it you guys can do it i'm not the brightest guy all it takes is practice a reason to learn it and just try to have fun with it the sky is the limit with this or i guess terms of service are as well just be safe out there and know what you're getting yourself into if you become really good at this and you really like doing it hop on upwork hop on fiverr there are a lot of people out there that really need data scrapers to scrape certain websites for them to help out their business so you could become an asset real easily with this skill i'll see you guys in the next video peace out